Hey guys, welcome back. So today I thought we would go through all my physical TBR because I've seen some people doing it and it looks like fun. And also I have a lot of physical TBR. So yeah, it's probably gonna be a little bit of a longer video. I'm gonna go through all the books, but I'm not gonna sit there and talk about all of them. I'm gonna try to go as fast as I can so I don't bore you. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the books that I've read off my bookshelf and I'm gonna set them off to the side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take camera and show you guys. And actually, I do have an app. I have this app I downloaded. It's called The Reading List. Basically, it just has all my books and I scan them and it's like a little like digital library. So I can see how many books I own, what books I've read, what books I haven't just by looking through my phone. So I use this a lot to track how many books I have versus going one, two, three, four, five, six, you know. So I have finished 226 books of the books that I own. Now, the books I still own that I haven't read yet, let's see, I have... 513 books. So I have 513 physical TBR. Yeah, that's a lot. More than half of the books that I haven't read. So yeah, you're going to get to see 513 books. So um, if you don't have the app, I recommend downloading it because I just think it's easier, especially if, you know, you're out and about and you see a friend and they ask you for a book recommendation or anybody asks you for a book recommendation, then instead of sitting there and thinking, oh my God, what do I own? Let me remember. You can just scroll through and it has all the synopsises. You can manually put a book in, but you can search it and you can scan it. I just scan it because it's so much easier. I just scan the little barcode on the back. Whoop, done. But okay, so let's get started. Okay, so starting off. So we have The Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. She Who Rides a Storm by Caitlin Sangster. And then we have some Lee Bardugo books, but they're of course out of order, but we have The Language of Thorns, The Lives of Saints, Rule of Wolves, which I thought was the first book, but I'm pretty sure this is the second one for the duology for, I think King of Scars is the first one, which is the one book I don't have, so that's great. And I have Ruin and Rising and Crooked Kingdom, Splendor by Brianna Shields, the second book in the Inheritance Games, The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, The Gilded Wolves, Princess Trials by Cordella K. Castell, The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. We have Finale and Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. I kind of want to finish the Caravelle trilogy before I read Once Upon a Broken Heart. I don't know if you have to but I kind of want to just so I can appreciate it more. And I have Ruthless Gods, Blessed Monsters by Emily A. Duncan. So next we have my V.E. Schwab shelf, which looks rough right now because I read some of her books already. But I have City of Ghosts, The Near Witch, This Savage Song, Vicious, and books two and three, a Gathering of Shadows and A Conjuring of Light. This starts off my thrillers. I have like a, the whole shelf from the top to the bottom is all like paranormal thrillers. So starting off we have Chasing Ghosts by Mark Hartsman, House of Leaves by Mark Z. Daniel Lewski, The Snitch by Allison Van Diepen, The Corpse Queen by Heather M. Herman, The Project by Courtney Summers, A Universe of Wishes by a bunch of people. It's an anthology. None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie. Clown in a Cordfield by Adam Sasser. I have, let's see, I have the second, the second and third book and A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. So Good Girl, Bad Blood, As Good As Dead. Lake's Edge, which I'm really excited to read by Lindell Clipstone. White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. And we have Mortal Remains by Mary Ann Frazier. Two Can Keep a Secret and The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. Ace of Spades by... F um, you know what? I'm not even gonna try to say that name. I apologize. You're So Dead by Ash Parsons. And let me tell you something. I thought this book was gonna be great, but before I even, I was two pages in and was already cracking up realizing how much I'm gonna hate this book. Let me just read to you what it says. Okay, so it's not even chapter one. It's the prologue. And it says, there was death by jumping off the cliff at her back, or death by stabby stabby. Stabbing that was actually the word, though. Her brain was slow in supplying it. Plum blamed the cliff at her back, and the demented killer standing about 20 feet away, holding a very big, very sharp, very scary stabber. Knife. 
And right there is when I decided that I'm probably gonna hate this book. <laughs> The Horseman by Christina Henry. We have Magic, Dark, and Strange by Kelly Powell. When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cool. Strange Practice by Vivian Shaw. Did I get it because my name is on it? Yes, but it also sounded cool. We have Awake and The Fear by Natasha Preston. The only two books in her entire career that I haven't read. I've read all the other ones and I tend to love them. All right, moving on to the second shelf below the thriller shelf I just showed you. My witch shelf, which is all witchy books. Of course I have Sabrina and Salem, because you know, that's my favorite, my favorite witch. And my cat's name is also Salem, so. Um, I have the second book of Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. The second and the third Sabrina books, which are based off the show. Then we have Truth Witch by Susan Denard. We have The Bone Witch by Ren Chupeco. We have The Year of the Wicked by Jeff Marionette, Gods and Monsters by Shelby Mahirin, To Break a Covenant by Allison A. The first two books in a trilogy that I thought was going to be really cute, I found them on the book outlet. The Babysitter's Coven and The For Better or Curse by Kate Williams, A Wicked Magic by Sasha Lawrence, Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sambury. And I'm actually really excited for this book. I think this book's going to be amazing. The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. The Witch of Willow Hall by Hester Fox. The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling. Half Bad by Sally Green. Cunning Women by Elizabeth Lee. And Cackle by Rachel Harrison. <laughs> this shelf is my Holly Black shelf. And so these are the books that I have left to read that I own by her. So that's why it's so empty. But I have the Modern Fairy Tales bind up of all three books. And then I have The Coldest Girl in Cold Town. Okay, this is back to fantasy. So I have Glass Sword and The King's Cage. Both by Victoria Aveyard. And we have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Savage Lands by Stacey Marie Brown. The Goddess Test and Goddess Interrupted by Amy Carter. Ruby Red by Kirsten Gere. Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. Trial by Fire by Josephine Angelini. Angel Fall by Suzanne E. 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 e? I never saw that name before. I never paid attention. That's kind of cool though. The House of Salt and Sorrow by Aaron A. Craig. Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. Fortuna Sworn by K.J. Sutton. Deal with the Elf King by Elise Kova. The Promised Prince by Courtney Kiesel. This book I found from a TikToker. She wrote it and I thought, I thought you know what, I'm going to give the TikTokers a chance because it did seem kind of cool and the cover looks cool. So it's The Sunlanders by Anastasia King. We have The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. The Dividing, uh, the academic trilogy, book one by Devin Downing. The End of the World is Bigger Than Love by Davina Bell. Okay, next shelf. We have this very ugly copy of the second book of City of Brass. City of Brass is the first book and this is Kingdom of Copper, the second book by S.A. Chuck Rabal chakraborty i don't know anyways this may be ugly and it's like large print but i got it for a dollar at dollar tree okay we have an ember and ashes by saba tahir oh we also have a torch against the night by saba tahir stain by ag howard warcross and wild card by marie lou and yes it drives me insane that they're both one's paperback and one's heart you know we're just gonna ignore that red rising by pierce brown the Ren hunt by mary watson the recruitment by k.a riley the kingdom by jess rothenberg <laughs> butchering these names real great okay then we have a bunch of maggie steve auto books that i have not read yet but everyone raves about them so i figure you know so we have the raven boys the dream thieves the Raven King and hardback right here. And then we have Shiver and Forever. One paperback, one hardcover. The Reign of the Fallen. A Song of the Dead by Sarah Glenn Marsh. And then I'm not going to pull these out, but we have The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. To Best the Boys by Mary Weber. And then Four Dead Queens by Astrid. Would never know how to say that last name. And then... We have The Secret Runners by Matthew Riley. And then these three are our trilogy by Taryn Matharu, The Novice, The Inquisition, and The Battle Mage. I have the prequel and I have the uh, Summoner's Handbook, but my brother is reading them right now. So I'm missing those. But yeah, I haven't read any of them yet. But he has, and he says they're great. So you want to give a shot, go for it.
Next is my Sarah J. Mass shelf, which is a hot mess right now, but I've read most of her books, so this is what is left. Because I have such a small space and so many books, I decided to go with the character... Oh my god, I can't remember what they're called. The character ones that are, like, really tiny for the Throne of Glass series. So I have... Queen of Shadows, Kingdom of Ash, Tower of Dawn, Empire Storm, and Assassin's Blade, because those are the ones I haven't read yet. So they're here, and then I have Crest or House of Sky and Breath, second book in the Crescent City series, which I haven't read. I'm currently reading Crescent City right now, so. Well, this is my vampire shelf, but these two books don't belong here, so I don't know why they're there. But we have Crushed Covet and Court by Tracy Wolf. We have The Damned and the Righteous by Renee Adier. And let me just tell you, these books are so pretty. I love them. And then we have The Bridge of Stars by Bella Forrest. We have two bind-ups. We have The Morganville Vampires Volume 1 and Volume 2, which has the first four books in it by Rachel Kane. Then I have two random... I have Blue Bloods and Revelations by Melissa De La Cruz, which um, I believe one's number one, and I don't know if this is the second, the third, the fourth. I have no idea. But I saw it and grabbed it because I do want to give this series a try. The King of Battles and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair. The Immortal Rules by Julie <laughs> Kagawa. And then these last books over here are all vampire books, but I got them at, like, a Goodwill. And <laughs> they were all together, and I have no idea what order they go in, but me loving vampires, I just grabbed them. So there's The Awakening, The Bitten, The Shadows, The Forbidden, all by L.A. Banks. If you've read the series, um, let me know which ones I'm missing and which ones I have and let me know if the series is good or not, because I got these each for, like, 50 cents. And, you know, you can't pass up cheap vampire books. Alright, next shelf. More thrillers. We have The Evolution of Mara Dyer and The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer, <laughs> which aren't with the rest of them, but um, by Michelle Rod Hodkin. And then, right here we have... The Retribution of Mara Dyer, The Becoming of Noah Shaw, and The Wrecking of Noah Shaw. I've not read any of them. Actually, I lied. I read these two, like, when I was, like, 17, but I don't remember a single thing, so I just act like I haven't read them yet because, um, I'm gonna reread them at some point. Then we have I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. We have Out of Control, which, by Alderson. The Agency, which is book one. Um, we have The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. This is How It Ends. The Bad Girls Don't Die. We have, I got this at Barnes & Noble. It's Unsolved Enigmas, which I read like half of it and the other half I haven't. It's somewhat interesting, but I got bored easily. So They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman. It's Cut Off. All of Us Villains by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. Killing November by Adriana Mather. A Game of Love and Death by Martha Brockenbro. The first book in the Nola Holmes series by, you know what, I'm not even going to, oh, it's Nancy Springer. I don't know, this is what I thought the author's name was down here, that I thought that was the author's name, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to pronounce that. Oh, it says Missing Marques, but I don't know, from back here, I was looking at, I don't know what I was going, I need to put my glasses on. <laughs> the Ghost Chronicles by Marlo Berliner, The Hollow by Jessica Verde. We have The Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall, and I heard this one's actually like really scary. The Library of the Dead, We Were Never Here by Andrea Bartz. A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. House of Furies by Madeline Ro Rokes, Rocks. My Playing Jane by Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Rap Path of the Apocalypse by S.D. Perry, based off the video game, which I'm actually kind of excited to read. Then we have some underlined branded books, Game by Lindsay Miller, and then Fright Night and Escape Room by Maureen Stoffels, and I kind of hear that these suck, but I didn't know that when I bought them, so now I just have them, which I probably will read them at some point, but not soon. The Haunted by Danielle Vega, and then The Dark and Shallow Lies. Okay, at this point, I ditched my tripod because um, we're getting low to the ground and it's harder. But, um, so don't mind if the camera's a little shaky. But this is where I keep all my graphic novels, and these are the ones that I haven't finished. I have, uh, what are these called? Oh my god, I forgot what they're called. Compendium. Compendium. Compendiums 2, 3, and 4 of The Walking Dead. I'm on the first one right now. I have my Daryl... 
and he's my favorite character. And then after I bought all of these, I found out that Daryl is not in the comics. So be aware that if your favorite character was Daryl, he is not in the comics. So just just so you know. <laughs> then we have True Blood, which I got for like three bucks. So I figured, you know, why not? We'll see if it's any good or not. I tried watching the show. And I couldn't get over the fact that his name was Bill and her name was Suki, and it just threw me off so much. And then coming over here, we have some dystopians. We have some of what's left of the Shatter Me series that I haven't read by Tahira Mafi. So we have Restore Me, Defy Me, Imagine Me, and Find Me. The nova oh my god, the novella me dumping all my books. We have The Darkest Legacy by Alexander Bracken, which. I think is the f it's the fifth book, but people are treating it like it doesn't go with the rest, like it's a different novel, so I don't know. And then we have this third and fourth book, the Into the Afterlight and Through the Dark. And then we have this series, which I love, even though I haven't finished it. And it's probably not real well known, but it's by Bella Forrest, and it is The Girl Who Dared to Think. So they have books three, four, five, six, and seven. Now let's tell you, I read book one freaking amazing i'm on book two right now now i can't say for the rest of the series that the rest of the series is good yet but book one was legit perfect and then i the poppy war which i wouldn't normally pick up but everybody was hyping it up and i felt like i was bullied into reading it so i figured you know what i'm gonna grab it because everyone's talking about it and i kind of want to be in on the hype moving down we got some older books we have the entire Gone series by, what is his name, Michael Grant, which my brother read, and oh my god, I'm destroying my book. Um, I was expecting all the covers to match, and then this come from Book Outlet. The rest all come from Book Outlet, too. And I was told that they were going to look like this, and then this one shows up, and it drives me insane. But you know what? We're just going to keep it anyway. So we have I Am Number 4 by Pitticus Lore. We have... The Partials by Dan Wells. Half of these books are the books that you, when you're on Book Outlet and you're trying to get the free shipping for $35 and you see like a $2 book. That's what most of these are. It's like me trying to fill out my cart. So we have Genesis and Chrysalis, which I believe are book two and three because book one wasn't on Book Outlet by Brendan Rachis, Ra 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 I don't know. Dune, I did not buy from Book Outlet. I bought from Book or from Barnes & Noble, full price thinking, oh my god, Timothy Chalamet, I'm gonna love it. Little to find out that everyone hates this book, say it's really hard to read. So, yeah, we're gonna try that at some point in life. We have The Delirium by Lauren Oliver, and this one is annotated by somebody else, which I didn't know when I bought it. And you know what? I'm not mad about it. I'm kind of excited to see what Stranger thought about this book. So, then we have The Zodiac Beware, or what am I saying? The Zodiac by Ramona Russell. We have Unwind by Neil Schusterman. Legend by Marie Lu. And then we have Allegiant, because it's the only book I could not finish by Veronica Roth. Same with Rick Yancey's The Last Star from the Fifth Wave trilogy. I couldn't finish it because I hated the second book. The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee. The Gender Game by Bella Forrest. And then moving down to the next shelf, we have. A lot of the books, a lot of Cassandra Clare, and then I have a bunch of the big, what are these? The P PC cast and Kristen cast, the daughter and mother duo that wrote the House of Night se vampire series, which aren't up with my other vampire books because there's not enough room for them once I have all my books on my shelf. And I read the, f this is a bind up of the first two. I read the first one, but I haven't read the second one, and I kind of forgot what happened. But I have Untamed, Chosen, Burned, Tempted, Hunted. Yeah. I have almost all of the books except the Last Hour series. I don't have any of those. But I do, I've read City of Bones, so that's why it's not here. But I have City, you know, City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, City of, oh my god, City of Heavenly Fire. And then I do have the, um, oh, uh, what the freak, the, I can't remember it. But you know, Will Herondale and Tessa them i don't remember the trilogy but <laughs> clockwork angel cocker prince and princess i have those i've read those already and we have lady midnight lord of shadows which did not come with a book cover which slightly infuriates me but you can't tell too much when you're just looking and i have queen of shadow or queen of air and darkness and then i have my big copy of kingdom of ash because 
Um, part of me thinks it's signed or it's like a special copy because someone said something about it and I don't know for sure so I'm keeping it Riverdale <laughs> which is a big joke I know but I bought this before the show went to crap and I got this from Book Outlet and this is like book three because I didn't have book one and then we have part of my Anna Green Gables shrine which didn't fit on the other shelf which is the landscapes of Anna Green Gables and oh my god I gotta show you this cover because it's absolutely beautiful Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I freaking love this. It's adorable. And then we have Rick Riordan, Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes, which I have yet to read. And then moving on, speaking of my Anna Green Grable Shrine, this is it. <laughs> um, I have many different versions of the same book, which um, I don't normally do, but I love this story. I love this story so much. I read the first book, and I need to finish. I'm on book two right now, but I need to finish the series because... Um, why buy all the books, you know, but I, I love book one so freaking much. I just, I just went for it. So I have the Chronicles of Avonlea, which I need to read. I have this copy of Anna Green Gables, which I technically have read, but, um, it's sprayed edges. It's so cute too. Does that have pictures? I'm pretty sure there was illustrations throughout if I remember right, but it was adorable and it was only like five bucks and I was like, you know what? I need it. I need it. Then we have... Anne of M Manhattan, which is a retelling of Anne and Gilbert, but in um, New York City during, like, our century. So, I'm excited about that. I haven't read it yet, but I am excited. The Blythes are quoted by Ellen Montgomery. Well, they're all by Ellen Montgomery, but the Rilla of Inglewood. We have Anne's House of Dreams, Rainbow Valley, and Anne of the Island. And these, wait, these hardback covers... Which, there's nothing too special about them, but they are kind of hard to find. I have a hard time finding them, which is why I wanted them in the first place, so. Then we have the tiny version of Anna Green Gables, which I love tiny books. They make me happy because I can just take them on the go. I know a lot of people don't like this format, but, you know, it does not bother me one bit. And then I have my original copy of Anna Green Gables, which has been through some trouble. It's been through a lot. And then I have the rest of the series in this paperback form, books three through eight. And let me tell you what, I bought this, I spent $40 on this series on Amazon because it was the cheapest I could find it. And then like three months later, I found this same box set on Amazon for like $18. And I was so upset about it. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I just wasted so much money. But you know what? It was worth it because it's Anne. So then if we move straight down, I have more of my classics. And yes, the lighting's terrible, I know. But um, I have the... What is this? The <laughs> Fairy Tales of the Brothers Grimm. I don't know if that... I don't even know if that's the original. But it was like three bucks and it's illustrated and it's cute. Also, I got this really pretty edition of Peter Pan because I am a... I love Peter Pan. Which I've already read Peter Pan, so I don't know why this is here. But, um, look, can, can I just tell you, some of these illustrations are hysterical. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful book. But the illustrations, I, let me tell you. Pull it out of the slip cover. It looks like this. It's really pretty. And then you look at some of the drawings inside and you're like, what on earth? Give me one second. I want to find Peter Pan because it was really funny. Now, look at Peter Pan. Look at him. That is not what you imagine Peter Pan to look like. Am I right? And oh my god, look at Wendy. Why? That's not what... <laughs> No, it's just, it, it cracks me up. I don't know why. It just does. But it's still a beautiful edition. And am I mad about buying it? Absolutely not. I'll bring it up here so you can see it. Um, Dark Fantasy Lovecraft Short Stories. The pages are like shiny green and it has a bookmark in it. I got this from Barnes & Noble and it was really expensive. <laughs> And then the rest of my classics are all the same brand. They're the Paper Mills classics from Book Outlet, which a lot of people don't like, but I absolutely love. Except Dracula. Dracula came ruined. It was, like, not attached. So I, like, had to glue the spine back to the book. But the rest of them came in perfect condition. So I have The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, Sense and Sensibility, Madame Bovary, Dracula, Little Women, Pride and Prejudice, Jane Eyre, The Great Gatsby, which I have read, but I did not feel like pulling it out because they're like, they're wedged in there, <laughs> they're wedged in there tight. So we have The Wuthering Heights, The Great Expectations, 
Persuasion, Pictures of Dorian Gray, and Hiding on the top is Frankenstein, which I have read, but once again is going to hide because I can't pull it out right now. And then moving on, we have more thrillers. We have, we already went over those. I just can't put them anywhere. We have 13 Reasons Why You by Carolyn Kep... I can't say her last name. The Girl Before the Last to Die, 359, Unspoken, Bird Box Reaper. I've given up on saying the author's names. I apologize. It's just taking too long. We have The Westing Game. And then I have a bunch of books by Mary Downing Hand, who, if you don't know, is like a middle grade author, but she writes like spooky books. And I read like one as a kid and absolutely loved it. It scared the crap out of me. So then I just started slowly collecting her books, even though they're not like super great they're like they're sentimental to me wait until helen comes deep and dark and dangerous the promises of the dead all the lovely bad ones took and the girl in the locked room and then under it i have the diviners which i haven't read yet but everyone says it's super scary we have supernatural nevermore which a lot of people don't know these exist but um i think they go in between the seasons you watch season one and then you read this book and it like it's like a in between season one and two and there's a like is there 15 of them 16 i don't know depending on however many seasons there are dark places by jillian flynn we have the captive they all fall down the northern lights paranormal paranormal oh my god what is this word paranormal normalcy paranormal paranormalcy i'm really screwing it over Venom, The Passage, Light as a Feather, and last thriller shelf, we have The Poison's Kiss, uh, Dark Energy, The Lantern's Ember, um, Went, what is this, Wentworth, I think it's Wentworth Hall or something like that, and we have Stags, A Study in Charlotte, Dead Girl Society, Night Film, which I tried to read over and over again and got sidetracked because I just wasn't in the thriller mood at the time, but I wanted to read it so bad. And then we have Hush Hush and Finale, the first two books in The Secret Circle, The Whisper Man, the Whisper Man by Alex North, The Good Girl by, you know, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. We have The Assassins, American Assassin, because um, I love myself a good Dylan O'Brien, Sharp Objects by Julian Flynn, The Forest of Hands and Teeth, which I hear is really good. I have The Nine Lives of Chloe King, Mystic City by Theo Lawrence, and then I have some Stephen King books and some other random books here. These two books, which are like the Dark Secrets 2 and 1, which are bind-ups of a bunch of stories. Hi, you want to make an appearance? Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> he's camera shy, but he's also curious, so... Um, and then we have a bunch of Stephen King's. We have Dr. Sleep, Full Dark, No Stars, and It. I'm currently, ooh, ruining my fairy lights is what I'm doing. Um, I'm currently reading The Stand, and let me tell you, Stephen King doesn't scare me. The movies do, but the books don't. I just don't know. Leave the World Behind and The Paris Hours, which are both Book of the Month books, which I didn't get from Book of the Month, but you bet your bottom dollar. I found them and grabbed them. And then The Dark Days Club by Allison Goodman. And that is the thriller shelf. We are almost done. Now we gotta go to like uh, my middle grade and my contemporary shelf. Okay, my shelves are a little dusty and the lighting's, it's all right, but it's kind of terrible. But um, these are like on the other side of my room, like in the corner. So these are the books that I still need to read. Um, we have, pa don't judge me, Power. Okay, don't judge me, I was curious. The second book in the School of Good, of Good and Evil, we have The Strangers, Fortunately the Milk and the Graveyard Book. Oh my god, I'm not even showing you. Fortunately the Milk and the Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. A bunch of TikTok, or book talk books I should say, that I still need to read. So we have Mexican Gothic, It Ends With Us, Ugly Love, Circe, The Song of Achilles, The Secret History, and then, which I'm sure you guys have seen a thousand times. Two, um, I don't know why there's a or here with these books, but second and third book and the trilogy of Burn to Burn. So we have Fire and Fire and Ashes to Ashes by um, Jenny Han and I never know how to say her name. Is it Siobhan Vivian? Siobhan? I don't know. But um, yeah, I still have to finish those. And then Hiding Down Below, um, Flipped, which I watched the movie and absolutely loved it. So I got the book and it came ripped like that and I was kind of upset but you know what more um Anne of you thought I was done with Anne no this is the selected journals of Ella Montgomery volume one this is about the author and she had like a friend who she wrote letters to and I have a theory that one of them was based off Gilbert 
and to know that there was a man that was like Gilbert in this world, like a real man that actually like inspired Gilbert, I was like, you know what, I have to find it. I have to read it and figure it out and see for myself. So then we have clickbait and Alex and Eliza, Spring Break, Tan Lines, Adrift, The Summer Boys, Call Me By Your Name, which I love the movie and I want to, I need to finish it. I need to read this book. Wendy Darling, the etiquette and espionage, like what did you call it, a quartet, Curtis and Conspiracies, Waste Coast and Weaponry, and Manners and Mutiny. On the bottom shelf, we have some double stacking because I'm running out of room. The Lovely War, which I just know is probably going to be like amazing. I just have to actually put effort in because it's like historical fiction and I get bored easily. Serious Moonlight by Jen Bennett, which I love the other books I've read by her. The Royals, Curses and Kisses, Five Feet Apart, which I'll probably cry when I read. I haven't seen the movie yet, but I already know it's sad. I can tell by the trailer. Field and Love, The Mall, which looked kind of cool. I got it from Book Outlet. Ooh, it's so bright. And then in the back, hiding, is every Gossip Girl book and every Pretty Little Liars book. So, um, which you don't need to see those. I mean, I read the first five Gossip Girls and like the first three Pretty Little Liars. And if any of you are wondering, I thought Chuck Bass was going to be in Gossip Girl. And even though he's, he barely makes an appearance, he's nothing like he is in the show. And it's kind of sad. So, yeah, that was depressing to find out after I bought the entire series. So, <laughs> moving on. Hiding in this corner back here, we have the fifth book and the paper princess which is the crack kingdom by aaron watt and then this is also one small thing by aaron watt also and i have book two three four and five of after and i read book one and you know it was okay and i thought i was gonna love it more and so i got the whole series and now that i'm older i realize how like back and forth it is and just the same more of the same so i haven't picked these up yet and i don't know if i will but i'm gonna try i'm gonna attempt it and then down here hiding we have more um books stay sweet world just right such a good girl the carrie diaries the truth about forever i have two princess diary well no i have three. Oh my goodness i have three princess diary books thought i only had two geekerella first book of the click series the it girl spinoff series of gossip girl which just I have just had the first book, and then the Perfectionist, which is the spinoff of Pretty Little Liars. I have the first book. There's more preppy books, like there's a series called Privilege or Private, and then I have the A List, which is another preppy book. Got the A List, the Blonde Ambition, and the Heart of Glass, which are all random. I don't. I was in a phase. Okay, Gray, Christian's Perspective. And I read the trilogy. I started that, and I couldn't finish it because it made him look like such a douchebag. Like, I hated him instantly. From his perspective, I just couldn't stand it. It made me, it made me grossed out. I just couldn't do it. So then we have Again But Better by Christine Riccio, and I haven't read it yet, but I got it because she was the first booktuber I ever watched, and she made me want to start one. So, of course, I got her book. I just have to read it. <laughs> Down below, hiding in the back corner, the six books in this little series, Don't Judge a Girl by her cover. I don't know if that's the first book, but it's that spy series. Teardrop and Waterfall, which I don't know what it's about. Truly Madly Famous, which is the famous in love that show Bella Thorne's in. I read the first book, wasn't impressed. I have Avalon High, which I freaking adored the movie as a kid, so I figured I'd adore the book too. A Kiss in the Dark, Summer of Chasing Mermaids, also known as. We got Rhymes and with Witches, a Me Before You, I watched the movie and I didn't cry, so I don't know what that says about me. 26 Kisses, Season of You and Me, I'm really, I'm really reaching here. Sublime, Lost Art of Keeping Secrets, and then we have Love Lucy, Invisible, and there's one more book, but I can't see it from here. It's really hiding. I have another shelf, like, hiding in that back corner, but it's nothing exciting. It's, like, classics that are, like, old and ratchet, and then, like, some Titanic books, because I was obsessed with the Titanic when I was younger, so I have a lot of Titanic books, and some old Nancy Drew books, which I've already all read, so that is my entire TBR which is a lot. So I'm on a book buying ban right now. And that is my physical TBR. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, click like and subscribe and um, I'll see you later.